Hi, I'm Hannah. <gasps> I haven't spoken today. I forgot I sound like Minnie Mouse. Today we're talking about dialogue, how to write it, how not to write it, and then we're going to look at a couple of scenes that my patrons sent in and see how we can improve their dialogue. If you'd like me to edit your writing in a video, go to patreon.com slash Kidder. Patreon.com slash Hannah Lee Kidder. I feel like someone has shoved a pillow down my throat and the words have to find a way around it and they're not doing very well. So I have eight tips for you. Number one is a little bit obvious, but write the way that people talk. If you can't imagine a real person that you know saying the words that you're writing in your dialogue, it's probably unnatural. New writers tend to think that they have to add some kind of element to their dialogue because they're a writer. You just gotta make it sound like people talking. That's it, that's the trick. Number two is kind of countering that. Your dialogue is not a direct transcript of a real conversation. So even though in real life it's natural for people to stutter or use filler words like like, like, and so, and um. It's distracting and annoying in fiction. If you're making your characters stumble over their words, it should be for a reason, like they're nervous. If they're not nervous and you're doing it, it's gonna read like they're nervous. Even though dialogue like that is technically realistic, it's not gonna read realistically whenever it's written out. It's just distracting. Tip three, take your character into account when you're writing the dialogue. They shouldn't all sound the same. So consider things like their upbringing and their education, where they're from, how they spend their time, time, the kinds of people that they're around a lot. If you have a group of characters who spend a ton of time together, they're gonna sound a little bit similar, but if they have very different backgrounds, they should still sound different. Tip four, realize that your characters are going to speak differently based on who they're speaking to. So a conversation with your grandmother at brunch should sound different than a conversation with like your best friend at a bar. Everyone code switches in real life, so your characters should do that too. Tip five, read your dialogue out loud. Hearing it makes it a lot easier to spot the unnatural bits. Tip six is to write realistic dialogue despite your genre. In fantasy and science fiction, you're gonna have some dialogue differences. Like, you're probably gonna make up terminology and slang that's not something from real life, and you'll have different cultures and they'll all talk differently, but you should still ground the dialogue in reality. Because, like, really lofty or super technical language is not fun to read. It's not gonna be as engaging. It's gonna, like, place your reader further away from your character because they don't find them relatable. So even if you're in a make-believe world, it should still be realistic. Tip seven is to consider subtext. Every conversation has layers. Many of them aren't spoken. Your characters might be talking about one thing, but they're meaning something else. Think about their relationship with each other, what they want from the other character, maybe some spoken or unspoken conflict. Think of the implications and consider how it's affecting what they're saying and what they aren't saying. Number eight isn't like directly dialogue, but it's super easy to fix with very little practice. When it comes to dialogue, tags can y'all calm down quit having characters exclaim passionately and ejaculate their words said is fine stated is fine asked is fine i swear to god if i have to read some shit in a manuscript like take the amulet she gurgled passionately out of her mouth with intense difficulty the cursed scene from her past echoing in her memory like an instagram boomerang shut up i'm so tired anyway now we're gonna look at a couple of scenes that my patrons sent in the first one is from squish whom i love squish sent a short story excerpt of two best friend characters having a conversation on one of their birthdays so the dialogue in this scene should be really familiar and friendly exus clapped her hands her rings clinking together she reclined in the wind so her backpack in her lap. Took her a moment, but she dug out a small mush cupcake. Her lips curled into a frown. Okay, that wasn't supposed to be like that, she said. But you see the vision board, right? The thought is there. I think I'm gonna make it a little more specific. Like, okay, wasn't supposed to look like that. Yeah, A plus for effort, I said. Like a C minus for execution. That's cute. Um... I'm gonna change like to maybe, just because like can be taken in different ways, and I had to read that sentence twice before I realized exactly what it was saying. A plus for effort, I said, maybe a C minus for execution. Oh, shut up, exit have shoved me. Happy birthday, dork. The oh, shut up, paired with the dork, is a little, I don't know, it's a little heavy-handed, like, YA friendship writing to me. I think I'll just, like, take out that. Exodus shoved me. You're getting the same relationship dynamic just from her pushing him. Happy birthday, dork. I might take dork out. I might leave it. I opened the used to be cupcake and Exodus fingered some icing from it. Oh boy, did she? So she said, licking the icing. What are today's plans, birthday boy? I think I'm going to make it a little more casual. What's the plan? I took a bite and near melted. There were pecans baked into it. I want a cupcake. Oh, you know, I said... Try to pass the chem pop quiz. It's just a little too specific for two friends having like a casual conversation. So try to pass the chem quiz. Wait, that's today? That just, I don't know. Something about her dialogue is feeling a little performative right now. 
because that today feels more natural. Reread some of Drinking Coffee Elsewhere in PE. Oh, you gotta be joking. That does too. Or just like you're joking. Oh, Doc Keen asked me to help out Mr. Young's sub in second period. That's fun. Exodus fell back against the window. Mark, this is your 16th birthday, she said. What about it's your 16th birthday? Yeah, I know. I was there for the other 15. Yeah, so was I. I'm going to take out yeah because I said it twice. Okay. Mark, it's your 16th birthday. Yeah, I know. I was there for the other 15. So was I. She stood. Her docs gave her an extra couple inches on me with the rest of her outfit. Ripped wine red jeans, black and white checkered shirt, black denim jacket. She sounds cool. I'd wear that. She looked like the poster girl for an all-black punk band. A band she admittedly tried to start when we were in middle school to less than stellar results. You've never done anything big on your birthday, man. You always play it safe. When are you finally going to take some risks? Do something wild. Get out of your comfort zone. Kiss a girl. Punch a cop. <laughs> The last sentence is funny. I feel like we need to take one of these other sentences out. I think I'm going to take out her calling him man. I'm going to take out you always play it safe. When are you going to take some risks? Do something wild. Get out of your comfort zone. Kiss girl. Punch cop. My face scrunched. I'm not trying to get arrested. Hey, both of those are wonderful feelings. Trust. I scoffed. You have not punched a cop. <laughs> it was one of my adoptive mom's exes. He was off duty. A cab. <laughs> That's beside the point. Um... I think it would just be, it's one of my mom's exes. Who calls their adopted parents their adopted parents? Also, their best friends. I think she'd just say one of mom's exes. He was off-duty ACAB. That's beside the point. I'm going to take out that. So this sentence wasn't really a sentence. It was just like her rattling some things off. So we take out that sentence. He was off-duty ACAB beside the point. Like, I think it just flows better with what her tone would be. I tried to start down the stairs. The bell would ring soon. That point being, Exodus pulled me by my backpack. You, Marcus Edmund, need to take a risk. A smile crossed her face, slow and wide. I knew that smile. I hated that smile. And I know just the one, she said. Um, so this is a commas place. So Exodus said pulling me by my backpack fixes that. I think that's done. The next scene is from my patron Owen's science fiction novel. It should be a little more tense because the characters have just escaped like a space attack or something. So there should be more tension in the dialogue in this scene than there was in Squishes. Rogar sighed and closed the door of the microwave oven. Close the microwave oven. Um, that's not dialogue, but I'm editing it. Oops. He checked the appliances of the Centurion's makeshift kitchen, each device failing to start. About he checked and each he checked every appliance of the centurion's makeshift kitchen and each failed to start of all things to break when we got hit rogar said he turned to jackson and kate cold stuff from a can for the foreseeable i'll figure out what's wrong eventually this is very explainy like i feel like this is unnatural because it's just a lot of detail for someone to say to other people who know what's going on so, of all the things to break, canned dinners for the foreseeable, I'll figure out what's wrong eventually. I'll take that out too. Kate shrugged, had worse. From what I've seen, it's often like a reflex to drop the word I in dialogue. Uh, for new writers, they'll do that pretty often. But Kate might just be a really short person, so I'll leave that. The word I can't pronounce, two newest crew members sat around a multi-purpose table. The living space at the back of the ship, cluttered in a need of several washes, hummed quietly as the engines below did their job. Rogar activated the console on his side of the table and a holographic map of border space appeared between them all. Rogar, Jackson said, I'm sorry about before. So the place that you put the dialogue tag, it kind of puts a little uh, pause in it. And I feel like it'd be more natural. Sai, can you scratch yourself later? I feel like the pause would be more natural after I'm sorry. Rogar, I'm sorry, Jackson said about before. For missing those shots, Rogar tapped the console buttons and kept his head down. No, this stuff on Emeros. I know what you meant. Um, I'm going to put the word mean in this sentence just for him to be like repeating what he said. And also this is two hyphens. So in Microsoft Word to make two hyphens on M dash, you just... There's probably a better way to do that, but that's the way I do it. I mean this stuff on Emeros. I know what you meant. Rogar raised his head and sent a cold stare through the hologram. You're fine, Jackson. Not like you'd have made a difference anyway. There are not a lot of times that people will actually say someone's name out loud. 
I'll leave it there because he's like directly addressing him and they weren't already speaking but for him to say his name again here didn't seem really natural I know what you meant Rogar raised his head and sent a cold stare through the hologram you're fine not like you'd made a difference anyway Rogar soaked up the awkward silence he loaded an image of a star system the flickering hologram zoomed in on a warm watery world with long chains of islands we'll go here Rogar pointed to the planet and dawdled around the table I don't know how I feel about that verb but it's not dialogue I'll leave it Sagan's far enough from the border for us to not get caught up in what will no doubt be what you people call a shit show after what happened at the forge. Our jump drive can get us there in a day or two, but the interval lengths might have to vary. It needs a new pump. This is a lot. Um, let's see. Sagan's far enough from the border for us not to not get caught. This is a split infinitive, but it's in dialogue, so you're allowed to be as grammatically incorrect in dialogue as you'd like. I, I think it just makes the sentence clunkier. So I'm going to fix it just because I feel like it would read better. Not to get caught up in what will no doubt be. Um, I don't know what, like, you people is referring to, but I'm going to take it out anyway. So that might be something that's important to the story, but I don't know what else is happening in the story, and I'm just going to take it out for the sake of cleaner dialogue. Sagan's far enough from the border for us not to get caught up in what will... In... And a shit show after what happened at the forge. Our jump drive. I don't know what a jump drive is in this context, but I'm still going to take jump out because I feel like drive is probably something they'd call it casually. Our drive can get us there in a day or two, but interval lengths might have to vary. I'm going to take half two out. Needs a new pump. Why not Demeter? Demeter, Kate asked. Ellen and I just came from there, Rogar said. Can't we go back? We could, Rogar carried on. Mm. Said. But Demeter is closer to the forge than any other inhabited system. People are probably flocking to there. We we'll take out two. And besides, Ellen and I aren't exactly well liked there right now. We have a repetition of there that I don't really like. I'm really just saying right now. I'm going to take out and as well. Besides, Ellen and I aren't exactly well liked right now. And I'm going to take out so it's, since it's Kate's dialogue, and she was, like, really short up here. So if that's a characteristic, this feels more natural for her. It's the better choice. Rogar turned off the hologram. So I feel like he's, I don't know what happened, but he's, like, annoyed at Jackson up there. And, like, stuff on their ship isn't working. So I feel like he's annoyed, and this is, it's kind of wordy for someone who's in, like, a bad mood. So I might just put yep. Okay, so some of the things I changed might be wrong considering other parts of the story but i don't know what happens in the rest of the story so this is just editing for what i feel like is um realistic dialogue okay cool that's all i got hope some of it was helpful for you thanks for watching if you'd like me to edit something that you've written in a video go to patreon.com slash kidder and thank you to my patrons for sponsoring this video especially owen and squish if you like their writing i'm linking their socials in the description so you can check them out mm, yep see you next week bye